welcome to the Pure Prophecy Podcast. This is Jeff, and in the studio with me today is Steve. Hi, Jeff. And David. Hey, Jeff. You We're know, dancing. You know, Kat did that on Standing in Faith to us, and she yeah, always yeah. goes to me first and then David, and then from out of nowhere she goes to David it, first. It took me I'm by surprise. I'm leaning forward and almost yeah. hit my face into the uh, microphone. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. And, we and there was laughing. a pause when I said, yeah, because I didn't catch that either. Anyhow. <laughs> so today's episode is a question that we received from a listener. And that question is, how do you know when it's God? How do we know when it's God? And we thought it might be really helpful for us to kind of talk through that. For all the listeners, how do you know when you're hearing God? Well, it's when you get those warm, fuzzy feelings. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. No, I know, and that's not too far-fetched, I, I, but I know where Steve's <laughs> going. So anyway, go ahead. Steve. Maybe. <laughs> I want to share a couple of scriptures here, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 9. But as it is written, what, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. So in this scripture, first of all, you, you have to have an expectation that God wants to talk to you. He's going to show himself to you. He's going to speak to you. Or he's going to put an imagination in your heart. And so first, first thing, you want to know if it's God or not? You've got to realize God's pursuing you more than you're pursuing him. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it says that the Spirit searches the dips of God in us. So the Holy Spirit is not a nag uh, convicting you, telling you what you've done wrong and doing this or doing that. That's your conscience. The Holy Spirit's job is to go and uh, speak to the Father, speak to Jesus and go, is Steve ready for this next gift? Is Steve ready for this next revealing? Can we reveal it? Can we reveal it? So Holy Spirit is looking at the things that are already deposited in us, and he's going, can we bring this up? Can we bring this out? So one of the things that you kind of, David said, you feel it, but in your heart, you begin to know this wasn't your stuff to begin with. This is new. This is, this is a shift. This is a change, but it's coming up out of you because the depths of God uh, by the Spirit searching is He's searching within us to reveal the things of the Lord, and so knowing that it's God, you, I have this kind of, I didn't have that thought. I know I didn't have that thought, but that thought was deposited in me. I, I begin to move toward that was the Lord speaking to me. You know, I think a good terminology I heard years ago is the difference between conjure up and bubble up. Conjure up means that I start thinking about something in order to express a word or something from God, and I have to work on it and develop it, as opposed to something, and I think you said it in a word, that bubbles up inside. That doesn't mean you don't meditate and it grows, but there's a big difference between what you try what you try, and it, it, you know, anytime we put sweat into something, it ain't God. It's going to be our natural man or woman trying to to get in there and and create something. And we border on witchcraft when we do that, which is dangerous. As we opposed, don't want to do that. No, we don't want to yep. do that. And so it is. I, I mean, a lot of times I don't get when when God gives me, I don't get any feeling necessarily feeling or whatever. Uh, I know warm feelings come as a result uh, from time to time, but a lot of times I just, and I'll ask, if I get a word from God, I'll say, really, God? Is that really from you? So I'll ask that question, and and then uh, I'll also look for that peace. Yeah, let you know, peace be the umpire. Let it be the umpire. Yeah, even when it's, even when it's tough. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, we've reviewed some prophecies on here that are tough prophecies, right? right. I mean, waves. Yeah. I cut a lot of that short because you get the point, but it was grotesque and gruesome, and 
That was a horrible prophecy. But I was peaceful with it because at the end, God God released so much hope, Mm -hmm. at least to me, that this, this, I took that as it could be avoided. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is even if it's, if it's tough, what you find yourself with is that peace or that hope that, that you're standing on. It, you, you can find that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, d- there was a prophecy that somebody gave. It was a good prophecy. This was years ago on the internet. And unfortunately, it was somebody that's not a prophet. It went viral on them and... It kind of made me upset when some of the prophets started to attack this person because he wasn't part of some group. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, hold on. This is somebody that's not claiming to be a prophet but sharing a revelation, and this is somebody that clearly doesn't know what to do with that. Mm-hmm. Somebody needs to come alongside of him because he has a gift, and te- and we need to help him learn how to move out in his gift because it was powerful, but it was incomplete. I could tell it was incomplete. And and why why did I know that that was God? Um I can feel a confirmation in my spirit. Mm-hmm. When I hear the word of God, I find a confirmation in my spirit. Sometimes I look around and I see people nodding. Um they might not even realize they're doing it. But they people have a tendency when the spirit is confirming something, they'll nod their head. Um, and now that I've said that to you, pay attention for yourselves. How often when you're hearing the, even a sermon, when you're hearing the word of mm-hmm. God, you'll find mm-hmm. yourself sitting there with your head nodding. Um, it's it's completely spiritual and it's completely natural at the same time. Yeah. Um, so for me, I look for confirmation. I I always like to describe this in words. I feel in my spirit, uh, mm-hmm. That's what it feels like in mm-hmm. my spirit, uh, mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Versus when I hear something that is not God, I'll I. It, it's almost more like chalk fingers on or nails on a chalkboard. It's like mm-hmm. So it's either for me, uh, mm-hmm, or a mm-hmm, which I know it's necessarily hard to see my face but i'm smiling as i'm doing this yes he is yeah i think that whole chalk on uh the nails on a chalkboard it's just like it rakes across the inside of you that way you go, oh no uh-uh. anyway go ahead steve you have- i want to share the road to emmaus mm-hmm. and this is in luke 24 and i find two things that are quite helpful in understanding the communication that god has with me and uh, the conversation back and forth. So the road to Emmaus, Jesus has died, and uh, rumors have gotten out that he has risen again. And these two disciples are on the road. Jesus shows up with them, and they're discussing the events of Jerusalem. And Jesus asks a very funny question and a very pertinent question. And he says, what things? I mean, it's hilarious. Like, you know, he was, you know, it was the deal that went down in Jerusalem through him, and he says what things. And I find that God's humorous about that when I'm so focused on trying to get an answer and get an answer, and I play it over for the Lord over and again. I rehearse it in my head, and the Lord will come back and go, Steve, what things? Because it's not about doing. It's about the heart of the matter and, and being in relationship and Jesus is pretty much talking about it's not about the events, it's about the heart of the matter. We learn this going forward because he, he kind of rebukes them and says, you are foolish men that you're not quick to believe that the, the Messiah had to suffer these things so that he could come into the glory. And he's teaching the minor prophets and the, and the prophets while they're walking on this road. Well, here's another thing. You know, there's times when Scripture can talk and teach and preach at you, but nothing goes in. And for these two, nothing was hitting pay dirt. It wasn't toward the end when Jesus was going to move on, and they invited him in for supper, and they broke bread. And when he broke the bread, the revealing took place. And 
they knew he was the Messiah, and then Jesus moves on and, and vanishes. And the, the one line that, go ahead. I have a question. I'm, I hope I'm not jumping ahead on you. Is this the same scripture where they said, and didn't our hearts burn within us? You're a great setup, man. That's where I was going. All right. So I completely killed your punch. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, great. Well, you know, we're a team This is event. the warm, fuzzy spot. Yes, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Um, this is where you're going to learn after the fact a move of God. And in the process, you're going to tell that this burned and this burned and this burned. And logically, it's not working in my head because I'm hearing the scriptures, but they're not being revealed. It was when the revelation took place, now the scriptures make sense. Now the burning makes sense. Now you can pick up on these burnings and you could be a little bit quicker than these two disciples here. But you also have to realize, and that's why I go back to 1 Corinthians, God wants to reveal to you. God wants to speak to you. God's mm-hmm. going to share his heart with you, and you have to get into a receptive mode. However, it's in the Lord's timing to bring the revelation. You can't speed it up. If, you, if I could give you 20 years of experience to save, don't try to speed these things up, because you can't speed up revelation. It's in his timing. What you really want to do and I'll use a baseball analogy, you are the catcher, you are not the pitcher. Mm. And Holy Spirit's back there encouraging, Jesus is throwing a curveball, so let's set up for a curveball. Mm-hmm. But you're receiving, you're not pitching, if that can help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we probably should have said this in the beginning. Um, I believe that all followers of Jesus— know and recognize and can hear his voice. Yes. Now, whether they've practiced that and gotten good at it, but I believe all, not just prophets. Yeah. And and I think a lot of them, it just it takes a little bit of instruction for them to, to go, oh, that's God. Yeah. You know, because he's been speaking to them all along in some capacity or other. And a lot of times we keep waiting for this booming, we think a booming voice or, you know, this is God, go do this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can come in all kinds of ways. I, I, I've had it where all of a sudden I got hungry for an ice cream cone. So I went out of my way to go get this ice cream. And guess what? I run into someone who wants to, we sit down anyway, having this conversation about Jesus and all. And I realized it was a divine encounter, but all I wanted was an ice cream cone. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways and and, and means that God will use to get you where he wants you and to speak for him whatever it is he wants you to speak. Now, you can deny it and say, no, I ain't doing that, and he'll he'll use somebody else. Mm -hmm. I also believe that God imparts in believers to be an outreach to those that haven't believed yet. I don't like to call them non-believers because I don't think they've gotten enough chances. So the Lord pursues the lost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's equipping us to be part of the pursuit because they may hear my voice, but I'm hoping they hear the words of the Lord. Mm-hmm. I hope they hear the voice of the Spirit. Uh, but God's going to use us to take a message of God to those that are lost. And those folks need, there's folks that need to see a move of God. They don't just want to believe preaching. And in this case, it took them seeing a move of God for them to realize they they were with the Messiah. Yeah. So it, it's not just for those that are lost. We can be believers and we still don't see. I'm being matter of fact. I don't see. Uh, and it takes the timing of the Lord to, to bring that out. So let's do a quick recap of what we just talked about so far. First off, I'm going to start with what we should have started with. All believers can hear the voice of the true shepherd. So everybody can hear. Then the question is, how do you know when it's God? So we talked about peace, right? We talked about letting peace be your umpire. Then we talked about the the confirmation, right? The mm-hmm or the mm-mm. Um, then you mentioned, well, I kind of interrupted you, burning in the heart, burning heart. But what were your other points in there? 
God asks questions. Okay. That are contrary to your logic. And when you start hearing a question, it's good to ask questions back or be quiet mm -hmm. because you're going to go in a different direction. It's not about the logic of doing. It's about the logic of being and being in relationship. Okay. Now, the one thing that I haven't heard us talk about is it's really good to talk to other spirit-filled believers about what you what you think you're hearing. Exactly. Right, to kind of get familiar, more and more familiar, and more and more confident that you are hearing God's voice. Correct. So the the more you practice it, the more you do it, the more you listen, the more you, you share and you talk through it, kind of like what we're doing right here, mm -hmm. right? We're talking through mm -hmm. um, different prophecies and how we respond to them. It's kind of... It's iron sharpening iron at that point. It's right. It's making sure that you get confirmation from others, right? Right. Um, so that you're not a lone ranger or an independent cowboy that's out there or cowgirl like, doing your thing, right? That you have some structure where you can share it, right? And it, ultimately, a word from God should be judged. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. And and learning, too, that <clears throat> a lot of times there's mixture, you know, because it's coming out of a human ves vessel. What I mean by that is that sometimes your stuff will get in there, you know, and it's learning to discern what's my, my stuff and what's God. That's why it's good to have it judged. So I'm going to look at it and say, yeah, that's really God. I think this is your stuff. Mm -hmm. and And go, yay. That, that should give you a secure, to have a prophecy judge should make you feel really secure and good, especially if you trust the ones that are doing it to, to hear. But I think another thing about hearing is that, that we often don't realize in the fact that God is always speaking to us. I mean, we can see, some people see, some people just hear in some capacity or other, whether it's, whether it's hearing wor words in your deep in you or um, impressions that we get, you know. Uh, but this is the one I was riding downtown. This is back when Dorothy Dix was still there. From You may not know what that is. It was at a, an asylum for the uh, mentally handicapped. And I'm riding by it one day, and uh, this pastor friend of mine looks at me. He's an older guy, loved and mentored me in some ways. He, he says, let me tell you a story about this place. He said, uh, years ago, he said, there was a, a young man. He was married and, you know, had kids and stuff. And he, he just became a strong believer and all of, you know, and it was great. Well, he, and he started giving money away and stuff. He had money, so I started giving. Well, his wife had him committed uh, to Dorothea Dix because he said, you know, when he was giving money, he said, because God was telling him to give it away. That's, you know, so she had him committed, like, seriously? <laughs> you know, God's telling you, you're hearing voices. So he calls up this pastor one day, and he says to him, he said, uh, Pastor, he said, I need you to come down to my day of court, and they have they actually hold court in these. I've seen them. I've yep. been in, been in them before. They had their own little courtroom, and and there. And he says, I "Need you to come down to the to my court, my hearing, and testify how that you can hear from God, or how do you hear from God?" You know. Mm -hmm. And the pastor said, "Okay," and he hung up. He thought, "What did I just do?" They're going to put me in there. They're going to put, yeah. <laughs> They're going to say, oh, I hear, I hear a still small voice. Oh, seriously, Pastor? Uh, get the jacket, you know, yeah. you're going in too. Uh -huh. So he worried about that the whole week. And, of course, he prayed. And he went and, and you know, finally his case came up. The judge called him up on the stand. And um, he says, Reverend, tell me how you hear from God. And he says it dropped right into him in that moment. Now, see, here's, here's, he knew he was hearing from God because this is something that came from without. And he, he, he turned to the judge. He says, God speaks to my understanding. Now, think about that for a minute. Now, y'all have heard this before, but 
Mm-hmm. Think about that for God speaks to my understanding. It was so profound. The judge took a second look, hit the gal, the gavel, case dismissed. That was the end of it. But God speaks to my understanding. That's that, that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Yeah. So a lot of times we have to recognize, you know, in our understanding and walk with God, I think the closer, the more we get to know him, the better we hear and better we understand what he's saying, mm-hmm. you know? You also, over time, develop a language that's between um, between you and the Lord. Uh, I want to speak to those that have seeing gifts and those that carry burdens, um, God will give images to you that uh, are very specific in your walk with the Lord, that the Lord doesn't have to go into many words to describe something. Uh, And so you've got to begin to realize you're learning a language of communication between you and the Spirit and the Lord. Uh, And and they're going to communicate, especially those that have seeing gifts and those that have burdens. You're going to know a certain heaviness and where that heaviness is located on your body as a burden bearer, that, that will mean something. I have several that, that the Lord does from time to time with burdens, and I know exactly uh, what the scenario is. It's, it's called discerning of spirits. Uh, and those that have images, you're going to begin to see images over and over again, and you need to begin to assimilate what does that image look like. Now, I know Jeff's going to ask me a question, so I'm going to give a quick answer to an image. Uh, for me, in dreams, when I see somebody in the kitchen and they're preparing bread or pulling bread out of the oven, packaging bread, they have a pastoral calling on their life, not a teaching calling, a pastoral calling, uh, that they are concerned about their brother and their delivering. I've had dreams that the guy was loading bread in a bread truck. I had one that was making bread. I had one that was pulling bread out of the oven. And you go, well, how do you know that? Well, I had to confirm that with the people that I was prophesying. I had to be brave enough to share the image, and then I had to you know, connect the dot. And it's been accurate ever since, and I've done it a dozen times. And it's one of those discerning of spirits. Maybe one day we'll have a podcast like that. Uh, but we can uh, begin to, to know our dream language and what images do mean. I will also volunteer here and say, if you want more about understanding about dreams or prophecies, you're welcome to call me or come up to me. And Well, honestly, our school of equipping that's getting ready for the winter session 2022, mm-hmm. every one of the courses that were being offered focuses on this very question. Different courses, but it's really kind of the same thing. Um there's a prophetic course being taught. There's a building with the spirit course being taught. There's a forming course being taught. It's all helping people hear and interact with God. Mm-hmm. So um, if you're interested, it's available on our our website and the events page, and you can sign up because I think most of them are being done over Zoom um, at this point. So shameless plug, but... I think we've touched on a lot in mm-hmm. a short period of time mm-hmm. about how to hear, how do we know it's God? Um, the one thing that I guess I would close with is practice. It's practice. Yeah. I would highly recommend people writing this down, right? If, if you think you heard from God, write it down and put a date on it and then go back and look. Yeah. And then get you a coach if you need to. Yeah. Somebody who's, Who's seasoned? Yep. And they'll look can look at it and say, Wow, that's God or this, yep. that, and yeah. Yeah. And if you need help getting direction to a coach, send us an email. Yeah. Um and that's part of the the releases. So our email address is on there. You can you can send us an email and we will see if we can't line you up with a coach someplace. Um, but ultimately my advice is write it down. Yeah. And and keep going about your day and going about your week and going about your month. And each time you get something, write it down. Mm-hmm. And and being able to go back, kind of like your road to Emmaus, and kind of review. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you'll be like, oh, that's what that was. Mm-hmm. And you'll mm-hmm. start being able to to connect it. It's, 
It's a process of maturization. Right? You grow into it. You learn it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Let's bless the listeners. Jesus, I thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit. He is a comforter just like you. And I bless the listeners that the Holy Spirit is helping you walk out the God type of life. So I bless you that God's going to play peekaboo with you today. He's going to show up when you aren't even praying or studying the scriptures. He's going to show up in your life. And I call for the Holy Spirit to go, aha, do you see him? Do you hear him? Do you pick him up? Let's have some fun. I bless you with that. I bless the listeners with clarity. I bless the listeners with confirmations. I bless the listeners with peace and I bless the listeners where they will learn to hear and obey the voice of our loving father I bless the listeners with joy the joy of knowing that you can hear from God the joy of knowing you can learn and grow in in learning to hear and see and receive from God I bless you with with the eyes of your understanding to be open, to be enlightened. Amen.